Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Angelique Smith. I just want to say welcome. I couldn't write anything because every time I started writing, I could only write about three sentences and then I would get, get brain freeze. But um, I want to do something that is very new to me. So you have to give me a minute. Um, Okay, we're gonna start here. Where's Dawit? Dawit, come join me, please. Samuel Asgadam. They think we're Sammy. That's not Sammy, that's Dawit. Ask it out. That's Sammy's dad. That's Hermes' dad. Okay. I feel, no, I know that we are all divine creatures. We are all divinity within. We don't need to look to the sky for a God. God is within. I have perfect peace. I am happy. I am complete. I am strong. And if I can feel this way, so can you. We call on the creator of everything and on Mother Earth who sustains us. We call on the energies who guide and protect us as we make our way in life. We call on our ancestors to join us at this service. Joseph Boutte, Reginald Boutte, Augustine Green, John Green, Askadom, Yatahit, Gazai, Askadom, Maspin, Askadom, Amlesset, Yatahit, and Alam, Yatahit. And we ask those ancestors. Okay, first of all, I'm supposed to say Ashe. So we call on the, um, the ancestors, so say Ashe. And now I pour libations to the ancestors. And we ask those ancestors of Hermias Joseph Ascadon to keep him company on his journey. and we ask them to be there. I would ask that all of our ancestors guide and protect us and give us the gift of perfect peace 
hyperlibations, ashe. Okay, I'm new to this and I think that that's all, but I hope that you get the understanding that we're calling those ancestors into the service. And so we are also asking for Hermes to have safe transit to his final resting place. And so when he reaches his resting place, we are also asking for these ancestors to greet him. We ask that Joseph Boutte, that Reginald Boutte, that Augustine Green, that... Askadom Gabrihed, Jazai Askadom, Masfin Askadom, and Masset Gabrihuet, and Alam Gabri. Okay, that they meet him also. Ashe. tell you that I want to tell you that I stand a witness that everything is in perfect and divine order. I want to encourage you to choose a vegan lifestyle. I want to encourage you to limit your use of alcoholic beverages and narcotic substances. I want to tell you that We come from royalty and regality. I want to tell you that we are very loving and kind and spiritual race of people. I want to tell you that we are very traumatized and we are very um, pressurized people. I, I want to tell you that I didn't have it. I didn't have an easy life. My dad was a functional alcoholic, and since the time I was five years old, I would had a lot of problems, and I knew that I was witnessing domestic violence, and I promised that I would never do that. I ended up marrying a man who abused me. And everything that damaged me, damaged Hermes. I conceived Hermes on my birthday, November the 15th. He was born exactly nine months to the date after I conceived him. Hermes was so close to me spiritually. I felt him coming. I knew that I was going to get pregnant on my birthday. And I did and Hermes came. I had not slept for two weeks leading up to this event on Sunday, but the Spirit spoke to me on Sunday morning at 5.30 a.m. and had me ask, why is your spirit troubled? My mother called me and told me that she thought that there was a problem at the shop because Samuel had gotten up and run out of the house without saying a word. When I went there, I was not, I had perfect peace. When the police officer told me that the person had been shot was Nipsey Hussle, my spirit said, oh, that's it, okay? So I just encourage, I never thought, I, I started going to 
an African spiritual science church. And that resonates with me. That resonates with me. It's called Caress, K-R-S-T. You can go online and listen to their archive um, podcasts, okay? Arius was such a beautiful, he had such beautiful energy. He's intelligent, um, he's radiant, um, he's a superhero. I'm gonna tell you a story. I was living as a single mother with the boys and I just thought that I, could, I didn't need a man because I could make my own money. You know, I had bought my own house because Nana told me you could only move back in with me if you save your money and buy a house. So I learned how to change my oil. And I thought that I was just that woman. And I got the right weight oil, I used the dipstick, I put the oil in the engine, and we drove from 60th and Rempaw to Slauson, right across the street from Ladera Park near Windsor Flores. And all of a sudden, smoke started coming out of my engine. <laughs> my engine was on fire because I had forgotten to replace the cap on the oil receptacle. So the oil had spewed out all over my tubing and everything, and my engine was on fire. Do you know that Hermes did not hesitate? He was like eight, nine, or 10. He hopped out of the car. He ran all the way down the hill on Slauson in the middle of the street to the intersection of Slauson and La Brea. And there was a fire engine that was making a left-hand turn. The light turned from red to green, but I don't know how little Hermes commandeered their attention. They made a U-turn and came back and extinguished my fire. And do you know what? I was able to turn the car on and keep on driving. I didn't need to call triple A. Not a hose was busted. You know what I'm saying? And so I think that that's what I wanna tell you guys now, okay? Our engine is on fire now. We're burning, but we're not destroyed. And just lastly, I wanna say that Hermes was a legacy. I feel as though, you know, when we had our closure conversations, my mother and I are very intuitive. We have a knowing of the coming and the going of death. And so we knew that death was coming to our family. My mother and I, we discussed it many times so many times that we discussed it in the presence of Khalil. And my mother said that she had been praying that God would take her because she was the last of nine siblings. Her four brothers and her four sisters had predeceased her. My father is gone, my brother is gone, my mom said, just about all her neighbors have passed on. So she said, when she talks to God, she tells him, I've lived a good life. I'm not afraid of death. So whenever you're ready to take me, I'm ready to go. My mother was so, she was so, that was her message. She's a, a junior pack rat. And I'm a senior, I mean, she's a senior pack rat and I'm a junior pack rat. She's collected so much stuff in her house that her bedroom, you stub your toe just trying to walk from the door to her bed. So she said she's not gonna sleep in her bedroom because the paramedics would have too hard of a time getting to her there. So Nana has actually been sleeping on the day bed in her dining room because she thought God was gonna answer her prayer and take her first. But that was not God's 
divine perfect order, you see. He took Hermes. I think of Hermes, and I think that Hermes knew, and, and we knew too, we knew too. Um, Hermes, he was the kind of person that, he was very busy and, you know, had a lot of things going on. And I would text him, and he would answer all of my texts. And I would call him, and he wouldn't answer all of my calls. But all of a sudden, Hermes started texting me, hey, mom. I love you. I'm just sending you some positive energy for your day. I hope that you have a beautiful day. I felt spiritually in my soul as if Hermes was going to leave. And we had, we had um, closure conversations through text messaging with one another. Um, and I think that Hermes knew too, because Hermes was doing things differently. My mother said that Hermes was going to her house with Imani every morning on the way to drop Imani off at school. And he was bringing um, Imani a drink. I mean, he was bringing my mother a green drink. And then he would tell my mom, I love you, Granny. And he would give her a kiss and he would tell her, if there's anything you need, let me know. And I just told Hermes, I said, Hermes, let me know. Now, this was a Saturday before he passed. I said, Hermes, let me know if you need me to pull up on you with some good, nutritious food. And then I wrote salad, and I had a little salad emoji. Because he tells me I should open up a salad restaurant, I could kill the game. He loved, <laughs> he loved my salads. And then I just told him my heart, and in my phone, Samuel's telephone number saved under heart. And I said, my heart feels as if there's possibly heaviness in your heart and soul. And in my phone, Hermes's contact is listed under soul. And Hermes says, no, mom, I'm A1. <laughs> That's what he would always tell me. No matter what was happening, he always told me, no, mom, I'm A1, because he didn't want me to worry. Hermes was very stoic, ever since a boy. Pain did not faze him. He took it like a champ, you know? And he says, I'm grateful. I have a studio again. I'm just happy and ready to work. I'm very proud of my son. My son, Hermes Joseph Aspidome, was a great man. On this past Christmas, I drove Hermes to an address on 6th Avenue on the other side of Southwest Drive, just a short distance from my mother's home, to drop him off and pick up some ATV-type vehicles. Hermes was so happy, and he felt so free riding those vehicles up and down Fifth Avenue. And he told me, Mom, this feels so great. I wish I that I would have done this sooner. All of the cares of the world were lifted off of him for that moment in time. And his spirit was free, like a little child's spirit, right? Hermes liked thrilling rides at amusement parks. And so I'm not really sad because spirit had already prepared me for that which was coming. 
I wish that Shell gas station would release the videotape of my interaction with the police officer when I went to the shop and he told me that the person who had been shot was Nipsey Hussle. I was in complete composure and total peace, you see, because I had been walking to my spiritual drumbeat that whole weekend. I made my green drink, I made my vegan meal, I made my herbal tea. And I even sat down with my feet up on the chair across from me, and I was talking to my cousin on the telephone. And one of the last things that I said to her is, Belinda, the world that we live in is so wicked and evil. I feel so sad and I'm so troubled and it's so very tragic that our children and our grandchildren are inhabiting this type of world. And I told her, I really, I really don't know what the answer is. I really don't know, but I think, I think that the only way to overcome the darkness is to be a light. We have to be the light of change that we want in the world. And then shortly after that, I got off the phone and I went to my, I went to get dressed and everything. I took my shower, I got dressed, and I was bending down to get the blow dryer and the curling iron out of the bottom cabinet in my bathroom, just like this. I'm standing up, I'm, I'm coming in a position of ascension, just as the telephone rang and it was my mother calling. And when death comes our way, my mother has a certain tone of voice, and it's frightening to me because I know that tone of voice means that death has come. And my mother asked, Angel, are you busy? In that tone of voice. For the first time in my life, that tone of voice did not frighten me. And I told her, oh no, mommy, I'm not busy, I'm on, I'm on my way. I'm just standing up from picking up the blow dryer and the curling iron. I'm on my way to your house. And she says, well, something has happened at the shop. You see, I already felt like I was in the right place. I was ascending, okay? I have ascended, okay? You have to find a way to ascend also. And that's all, that's all I can say. I just thank you. I feel like when I was a little girl and you would read the story tales that there's a king and there's a castle and there's royalty and they're having a celebration and they invite people from lands far apart and wide to come into their kingdom and to celebrate with them. And I just thank you, I'm honored. And I know that if Hermes can look down on us, that he's very honored also. He was very humble. And I'm just glad that the love, the love of the legacy of love that my mother started and that she passed on to me, that I passed on to my son. And since he was in the public arena, that he passed some of the love in his heart into the love that's in your hearts. So let's, let's, water, let's water the seeds of love that Hermes displayed to you that you know that you have planted in your heart. Let's water that love and let it grow. And what I was gonna say, one last thing and I'll let you go. I did get a little teary-eyed when I laid down about the third night after Hermes had made his transition and I started to cry because I was thinking about 
I can never be in Aramis's electromagnetic ray field. He had an aura around him that if you sat with him, it gave you power and energy, it like filled up your spiritual tank. So that when I left and went to work and whatever, I was in the world for the next week, he had left something with me. And so I'm sad. I was sad that I wouldn't have that anymore. And then I thought about, my son knows the secret to the mystery of life. How thrilling is that? How thrilling is that? He liked thrilling, fast rides, ATVs and all that. I'm like, how do we move around when we're on the other side in the spiritual realm? I'm sure that Hermes is loving it there. I think it's like a Pirates of the Caribbean ride. It's dark and I always wanted to get out and get the jewels out of the treasure chest. So when I think of death from the perspective of Hermes, it doesn't hurt, you see, because the ego is what hurts us. So when we can get me, I, my, and mine out of our thinking and think about what is the other person feeling? What is the other person thinking? What is the other person experiencing? What, what is the situation all about in its fuller spiritual context? Then it makes the pains that we experience as human beings on the road of life that we travel a lot easier to handle.